welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor and YouTube World or Watches Other Stars. But today I'm presenting you a very particular watch together with Laurent Lecan, who is in charge of the watchmaking division of Mont Blanc. Welcome, Laurent. Merci. Bonjour, welcome. Ah, bonjour, we are still in the French part of Switzerland. Bonjour, Laurent. But it is Watch Advisor, as you know, and the Watches Other Stars. So we too we will disappear from your screen very soon. And you will only see the icon, the how can we, how shall we call the watch that we are going to present? Let's say in French, the first chrono par la lunette. The first chrono par la lunette. There you go. Enjoy the watch. And before I go, this is an art installation, correct? Absolutely, yes. Just tell me the artist, because I went with the first day we filmed here a video and I was not sure what this is. And I said, this is kind of a, a fountain pen, but it is not. It is a pendulum, I mean, while Absolutely. Earth. Absolutely, it's a pendulum, so we're using the, uh, two magnets and uh, it, it, it is a mountain. It's uh, drawing a mountain. And this mountain, everything has been designed in advance by the artist Marie, the lady who is uh, behind you, by the way. And uh, the pendulum will work during 10 hours every day to recreate this design. That's amazing. And every day at the end, Marie will come, sign it, and then it's a unique piece. And the next day, we start with a new drawing. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. We are starting a video with the watch uh, being shown on the wrong side, if you want to put it that way, because we are not showing you the dial yet, but the back side, Laurent, there is a Minerva movement on our screen we're yes. talking about. And I think when it is about Minerva, it's always very good to start with the case back. What you see here on this case back is extremely historical. It is the 1321 caliber based on the 1320, 100 years old movement. Wow. And here you can see, for example, on the middle, middle right, you see the V-shaped bridge. At the signature of Minerva. It's a traditional signature of Minerva. We protected this, this design in 1912. And yeah, of course, you have the 18,000 alternances and hour. Yeah, it's 18,000 semi oscillations, two yes. and a half hertz. Yeah, so it's own a hairspring and six on that point. All our calibers are produced with our own hairspring. Minerva okay. is able to do this, yes. Yeah, we have to note that, our yeah. Recipe, yeah. Absolutely. We are working uh, not with brass, but uh, with my shop, German silver, for the plates and for the bridges. So, how it was the case also in the watchmaking industry in the past 100 years ago. Yeah. All watchmakers need to wear little condoms on their fingers. Yes, not always. Spoil. Yeah, yeah, it looks funny when you go to the atelier and then you yes. see the watchmaker wearing a little... One. Always speak a little yeah. one, but always speak. Yes, yeah. <laughs> because if you touch German silver with your finger, your fingers are greasy, then you will have spots and they Absolutely. have to protect the fingers. Absolutely. Laurent, tell me also something. There are lots of numbers being uh, mentioned here behind Ooh, yes. on, the, on the case back. And... Uh, this is one. Uh, 19, 1927, for instance, what happened here, or what is was, what is it telling us that there is written 1927 here? Uh, it's it's excellent. Uh, and by the way, your choice is an excellent one as well. I explained to you in a few seconds why. But what you see around, these are the key dates for Minerva, with development of the key movements uh, and so on. And 1927, it's a key development for Minerva. This is when the manufacturer has developed the first flatted bezel. And it was used for the chronographo aritorno. And chronographo aritorno was uh, designed for the pilots. It was a specific bezel you could move for having additional indications. And this inspiration was so cool for the next steps of the watch. This movement, its importance has been assembled, disassembled, reassembled by one watchmaker only. And the customer, the final customer, the fan of Menava, who will uh, buy this watch, we'll have this watch in his collection, we'll have the opportunity to meet the watchmaker who assembled this caliber. This is good to know and I find this very cool. So you have to discover Minerva, otherwise you won't understand how they work and tick. And now I have to turn the watch around. Yes, okay, so let's do it. Here it is, fluted basil. Yes, now oh, you understand? <laughs> yeah, I understand. No, of course, yeah. And uh, we are um, obviously talking about a chronograph, but um, some might already... Uh, something is missing. Something is missing here because normally when we talk about chronographs, we do have a crown. Yes, if it is an integrated chronograph, the push pieces will be aligned exactly with the crown. If it is a modular chronograph, you will have 
a disalignment, but okay, we are not having any push pieces here. So what's strange here is the watch hearing, um, is it uh, maybe a smartwatch saying, stop? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do something. Yes, absolutely, you have to do something. And, so, and this is the bezel that is? Absolutely, the bezel. We have two like, key elements by Minerva. The invention of the bezel 1927 is one of them. And Minerva is very famous for the chronograph monopoussoir. The monopoussoir is the signature. Yeah. Yeah. We developed in 1911, uh, and 1911 the fifth of a second for the chronograph. In 1912, the tenth of a second. And then 1916, 1936, and so on. And here, for the first time in the history of watchmaking, it seems to be, we have here developed a chronograph without any pusher. The bezel will make the functions. So I learned it first, how to operate. It's uh, you push a little bit and you turn clockwise. Absolutely, yes, yes. Did I turn clockwise. You, you can turn, turn clockwise directly, yes. So what you need to do is you slightly push in. I wear gloves, so this looks a little I bit... I can do it if you... If you... No, it's all, I'm, I'm fine. I just want to explain because people... I, I always want to show the watches with gloves. It looks better. And you wash your hands all day so they don't look as appropriate as they should probably. But I just say with gloves, maybe I might slide a little bit. But you press and you turn and you see well, the and watch stopped. So it's really... The function is there. It stopped. And if I continue to turn, you will see it will reset. So there will be a reset. The central second hand will reposition at zero, of course, as it should be. And uh, you, let's see. And what you say zero is the, should be a 12 as well, but it's not a 12, you see. It, there is a something else. This something else at 12 comes from the rich past of Minerva. It was exactly, yes, this indication, it was on the very old chronograph from Minerva. And on top of it, you have here a specific blue that has been created also for Minerva only. And uh, you have tachymeter for the uh, for three distances, 1,000 meters on the outer dial. And then, so you have the 400 and 200 meters in the center. Look, there it is. Reset. No push pieces. You see also here, alignment, of course. Reset to zero, reset to zero. And if I now restart the chronograph, same procedure as before, you slightly push and you turn and there you go. And it's a nice haptic response. Yeah, I mesmerize every time I see I, I, I And I'm, I'm used to one because it's uh, every day I use it, but it's, uh, it's wow. Yeah. How waterproof is such a case? So 30 meters. 30 meters? Yes. So, okay. We had this issue with chronographs that had, or not chronographs, with watches that had similar functions. If you are using the basin, of course, there is a problem, could be a problem with water, but 30 meters is quite enough protection for daily use. In that case, yes. Yeah, no, but you are not going to dive with that watch. No, for sure. No, not. No, 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 not with this one. But it brings incredible elegance because here it's perfect. You have in the middle, you have the logo of Mont Blanc, of course, and there is nothing else disturbing than this. And you see the beautiful case with the lugs and everything is operated and you see the chronograph is still running. The central second hand is swiping over the dial in one fifth of a second. And you see this tick, 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 tick. Higher frequency wouldn't mean tick, 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 tick. But here you have a really slow, I always call these, these old movements, V8 big blocks. Huh. Yeah, because they're getting rare. It's like the V8 yeah, big blocks in you're cars. Right. You're right. And Absolutely. they are really old. Uh, yeah, it's the way how the watches have been done, were done earlier. But this piece is uh, an excellent... Uh, I look at the dial, how it is. It's an excellent explanation. I mean, it's about uh, what Minerva is. Minerva is really made of innovation. And I want to show the movement again because I, I would wear the watch the other way around. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. This is so beautiful. And you also see here quite a big balance wheel. Laurent said it before, they have their proper hairspring. You should visit once if you can. Uh, Minerva, it is fascinating to see. You will have a little bit the impression to enter a museum. Because they really do watchmaking the old way, 
the old good old way, I have to say. Yeah. I think you agree. Museum or time machine. Or time machine, yeah. yeah. Um, is this a piece that is limited or is this a piece that will... Uh, it is. So this one is limited. Uh, it comes also with a steel case and uh, uh, white gold and bezel. And it's limited to 100 pieces. Can't stop playing around because I like the color. It's blue and everybody watching what should wiser knows that I'm very into blue. So this is, first of all, a very interesting watch in terms of watchmaking. Because have you ever seen a chronograph without push pieces? Probably not. Yes, we have seen some with a mono pusher where you start, stop, reset through the crown. We have seen uh, chronographs uh, that, uh, yeah, uh, have different ways of interpretation how to start, but I haven't seen one with the bezel. It seems to be unique. Absolutely. Yeah. I have, I, it seems to be unique. But once again, it's 100% in accordance with the roots, with the, with the values of Minara. So we are here combining the mono pusher chronograph stop. and the flooded bezel. Yes. And the mechanism is inside the bezel. And reset. <laughs> I like it. Now I get the feeling, how much do I need to press? It, it was in the beginning, I was a little bit, um, how you say, I was a little bit... Uh, um, uh, it's weird at the beginning because you, you don't know. No, it's and you don't know how, how, how much you press and turn as once you know, and it's a, there's a clear haptical response coming. Yeah. So there is a point where you know, when you pass the point, then the chronograph starts, and the same happens if you want to stop it, you have that... It's always 12 degrees, huh? 12 degrees for the start, 12 degrees for the stop, 12, 12. yes, okay. 12 degrees. But on a technical point of view, that's interesting. When, once you reach 6 degrees, then the function starts working and automatically it will, um, it will keep on till 12 degrees to stabilize it. So you make the 12 degrees, but at 6 it starts working and then automatically it stops. So at 12, it's stabilized and then you can start with a second function. It's very technical. Start, stop, reset. Three times 12 degrees, but from six, the function starts. That's technical. That's how it works. So now here, you have a 40, 42.5 millimeter the diameter. And I would like to add something else. We are playing now in Switzerland for three patents. So once again, it proves how disruptive and innovative the chrono on a lunette, as we say in French, is something very, very strong in the history of watchmaking. Chrono par la lunette. I like yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. And um, of course, the watch also has a price. Oh, unfortunately, someone has to pay some. So how much will it be if you probably... It will be uh, 45 for the one you have now on, the, on your screen. Including, euros, including tax? Including the VAT, yes. Yes. And uh, 60,000 euros, including the VAT for the one in lime gold. Now, just for information, the lime gold is a gold that uh, we have developed by Moorf. It's a specific gold. But we unfortunately cannot show the watch because it is in the office of the CEO, I heard. And he is showing it to some clients. So um, sometimes you're lucky. Um, they just knocked at the door and said, OK, we can also show you the gold one. Here it is. Quick look on it. So not a color seam. It is green and gold. And the stainless steel version is blue and silver. So it is exactly the same watch, featuring exactly the same movement. The case is pretty heavy. Yes, it is gold, of course. There is that difference. But it is the same chronograph. And this one is limited to how many pieces? 28. 28. Yeah. Whilst the steel version is limited to 100. 100 pieces, to make that clear. There you go. Nice view on the gold you know, version. If I just may add something. You, of course, you should. Um, please, please. When I proposed to create uh, for the first time this, uh, this beautiful piece and focusing on the bezel only, I proposed it to my team. And at the beginning, I said, wow, it's very disruptive and uh, we will try to do it. And uh, I saw such a strong motivation in my team, watchmakers, engineers, and that's what we've managed to create all together. It's a team work. And uh, it's a very good, uh, for me, it's, it shows that when we are together, we are capable of developing crazy things as it is. And one of our mark makers, you know, is Nimzai Pilgrim, one of the best climber ever. And Nimzai said something I really like. He said, 
don't hesitate to dream big. And he said, giving up is not an option. And I can tell you for me, it's the same. Giving up, clearly for me and for my team, it was never an option. And that's what we've managed to create together. Bravo, bravo. Well said, well done. And you were able to discover a really spectacular watch, um, one of a kind and never seen before. So, Laura, thank you very much for presenting us this masterpiece. I'm um, really... It's for your time. Me, it's, it's, your time. It's, it's 30 years I'm in the industry and uh, sometimes I am surprised or I, I, I get surprised and here I really learned something incredible of what you have been doing. Thank you very much. Thanks to you and don't forget, don't be afraid to dream big, as Nim Dai says. I will never forget and if you dare, you do. Bye-bye and Bye. yeah, here's the pendulum <laughs> working. We are right in time. Bye-bye. Yes.